Hi, I'm Becca Ewing from Penn State University, and I'm presenting on archival searches for stellar mass binary black holes in LISA. And I've done this work with Sarabi Sachdev, Sora Borhanian, and B.S. Satya Prakash. So as an outline of my talk, I'm going to start with multiband detections um, with third generation ground-based detectors and the LISA detector. And then I'll discuss um, whether it is feasible to detect stellar mass binary black holes in LISA. And um, then I'll talk about a population of in-spiraling sources observable um, by both detectors. And then I'll talk about um, scaling the LISA waveforms by mass and frequency um, up into the LIGO or the audio band. And finally, I'll go over my results which show that archival searches in LISA assisted by 3G detectors require template banks of only about 10,000 templates. And I'll show bank simulations comparing overlaps of Newtonian and 3.5 post-Newtonian template waveforms for each bank. So multiband detections follow a single source from the low frequency LISA band up through the high frequency ground-based detector band. So LISA would capture the slowly in spiraling phase and the third generation detector would of course capture the tripping in spiral merger and ring down phase. Um, a detection like this would have great potential for science gain um, and I've listed some potential um, things that we could get out of a detection like that here. So LISA is sensitive to signals in the low frequency band of about 0.1 millihertz to one hertz. And stellar mass binary black holes would fall into this range from about 10 millihertz to one hertz. Um, although LISA is expected to be most sensitive to supermassive binary black holes with masses around a million solar mass, we do expect that it could detect some um, stellar mass binary black holes in the range of tens to hundreds of solar mass um, if they are sufficiently close. On the other hand, third generation ground-based detectors like Einstein Telescope and Cosmic Explorer are most sensitive to the frequency band one to about 10 to the fourth hertz. And we expect to detect um, many, many stellar mass binary black holes um, with 3G every year with very high SNR. And so from 3G, the errors on intrinsic and extrinsic parameters are expected to be orders of magnitude smaller than LIGO. So now I wanna talk about the feasibility of detecting stellar mass binary black holes in LISA. And in order to do that, I'm just gonna first take a step back and discuss how we do matched filtering searches uh, in the first place. So we use a template bank, where here I'm denoting the templates as H of alpha, and for each template, we calculate the inner product or the overlap with the signal, which here is X, and that's what we're calling sigma alpha. So what we wanna do is find a value of sigma as a threshold above which we could claim a detection. In order to do that, we can use this relationship between the sigma threshold and the false alarm probability by finding an acceptable value of false alarm probability, plugging it in and using that sigma threshold. So we could choose something like 10 to the minus three, something pretty small, but um, we have to also account for the size of the template bank as a trials factor, because if we have a very large template bank, you know, the more templates that we compare our data to, the higher probability we have that a signal containing only noise will happen to have a large overlap. So what we do is we scale down our acceptable value of false alarm probability by the size of the bank, and then we can plug that into this relationship to get the sigma threshold where we can claim detections at. Um, 
So doing this, you get um, a relationship like this, um, which shows that for stellar mass black holes, binary black holes in LISA, um, we would need a template bank of around 10 to the 40th templates to claim a detection in a blind match filter search, which is obviously way too big to be computationally feasible. So this estimate comes from this paper where they also show that if you use third generation ground-based detectors in an archival search, you can reduce the number of templates in that bank. So they use um, an estimate of third generation parameter accuracies, which are 10 times better than what LIGO detected with GW150914 um, and calculated that they could reduce the size of the template bank down to 10 to the 11th templates. However, that's still definitely way too large to be computationally feasible. Um, so what we wanna show is that by using a better estimate of third generation parameter accuracies, we can actually reduce the template bank down much further to where it is um, small enough to use in reality. So on this slide, I've just shown a plot of the um, distribution of the number of events um, detectable by LISA every year at different SNRs. And so if we can reduce the template bank size to a small number, we expect to be able to observe um, sources in LISA down to SNR four. So summing up all of these events with greater SNR than four, we would find a population of about 200 events observable in LISA and 3G detectors um, every year. And so these 200 events could potentially be detected um, using archival searches. Um, so we um, find a population of such events by first starting with a large set of binary black holes, which are observable by 3G detectors. For each source, we calculate the LISA SNR, and we keep only the ones that have LISA SNR greater than four, and we come up with 181 or about 200 sources. So these are what we will use to simulate um, archival searches in LISA. For each source, we calculate, we generate a template bank, and then we use injections to calculate bank efficiencies. And this plot here just shows the distribution of um, masses versus the 3G and LISA SNRs for all of the sources that we used in this work. So in order to generate the template bank and the bank efficiencies, we wanted to be able to use the, all of the code that we already have for LIGO problems. Um, in order to do that, we wanna scale up essentially the LISA problem into the LIGO band. Um, the way we do this is we start with this equation for the chirp time. And by assuming our mass range to be 10 to 100 solar masses and um, assuming waveforms that merge in less than five years, um, we can find that our frequency in the LISA band would be 10 to 150 millihertz. We can scale this frequency up by a factor of alpha equals 10 to the fourth in order to bring these into the LIGO band. Um, but we want to leave the strain unchanged in the transformation. So we also transform the mass and the distance and the chirp time down by a factor of alpha. And so I just wanna stress that after the transformation, the, um, the waveforms will merge um, in much less time than they would in the LISA band. Now, in the frequency domain, we could apply all the same transformations, and you can see that we would come up with an extra factor of one over alpha in the H tilde of F. So in order to leave the SNR unchanged in the transformation, we also scale the PSD down by a factor of alpha. And so you can see here that all of the alphas cancel out and the SNR is unchanged. So 
Here I just shown an example um, for the Taylor F2 waveform, which is what we use in all of our um, calculations. And so you can just see that by plugging in the factors of alpha um, into all the appropriate places and the amplitude and the frequency and the phase, everything cancels out just as we expect. Um, and so this transformation works. So here I show um, uh, the results of the template bank sizes that we calculated. Um, so we used the stochastic placement algorithm, which actually overestimates the required number of templates as compared to if we had used a metric placement algorithm. And we require a minimum match of 0 0.98 for template placement, and we use 3.5 post-Newtonian Taylor F2 waveforms. Um, so we calculated a template bank for each of our approximately 200 sources, and here it just shows the cumulative distribution of all of those template bank sizes. So you can see that the mean size is only about 8,000 templates, um, and all of them fell in the range of about 200 to about 100,000 templates at the largest. And so this is a really great improvement over previous estimates in the literature. And these template banks would definitely be small enough to actually be computationally feasible to search over. So for each template bank, we calculate the um, bank efficiency. Um, to do this, we use sets of 1,000 Taylor F2 3.5 post-Newtonian injections. And when we calculate the matches, we start with a frequency step of two, and we iteratively decrease it by half until the matches converge, and then we keep that value of frequency step. We do this just to make the match calcu calculation computationally feasible, um, because if we used the typical value of DF, which is inverse waveform duration, or about one over the Newtonian trip time um, for these very long, slowly in spiraling Lisa signals, this value would be way too small to actually be possible um, to use. And so using this method just makes the computation easier. Uh, so we calculate the efficiencies twice for each bank. Once we use the 3.5 post-Newtonian approximation in the match calculation, and then we do it again using only the Newtonian approximation in the match calculation. So here I've just shown the results of all of these bank efficiencies. Um, so on this plot, each line is a template bank, and um, the distribution is over the mismatch, or one minus the match of a thousand injections for each bank. Um, the green lines here represent calculations where we used Newtonian template banks or Newtonian template approximation in the match, and the blue lines are where we used 3.5 post Newtonian approximation um, in the match calculation. And so here you can see that the 10th percentile match for both sets of banks was 0 0.989. There's very good agreement um, between the 3.5 post-Newtonian approximation and the Newtonian approximation. So this indicates to us that it is sufficient to use Newtonian template banks for these calculations. So just to conclude, we used a population of about 200 sources, which are detectable with LISA SNR greater than four and 3G SNR about 100 to thousands of SNR. We demonstrate a significant improvement over the bank size needed for archival LISA searches compared to previous estimates. So we reduce from about 10 to the 11th templates to only 10 to the three templates. And this shows that it would be feasible to use a small enough template bank to detect stellar mass binary black holes in a LISA archival search by using parameters found by third generation ground-based detectors. Um, we also show that the Newtonian approximation is sufficient for this purpose, and therefore we have reduced the parameter space 
necessary to search over down to only one dimension. Um, so that is all I have and thank you for your time.